Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Hecarim Endure. Gonna be our next deck here. Um, yeah, played this one about a week ago. It was pretty fun. Want to bring it back. Been just having success with Hecarim decks recently. Adding a fifth power, like adding that extra power to Hecarim has been a, a big change for this card because now it trades with all the other 5-5s five in the format, which there's there's a bunch of like five mana 5-5s five just in, in different regions and everything. It's a really important stat line to have. So now uh, Hecarim's looking stronger for sure. And this deck is um, you know, about playing a bunch of cheap things that you don't mind dying at all, and then winning with our top end. And we have Hecarim at the top end, which is a great top end card, but you don't always draw Hecarim. Sometimes they have a removal spell for it. You know, you need a little bit more. And so we can pair Hecarim with They Who Endure, and we have two awesome options at the top end. Now, you know, like this is basically, you know, a They Who Endure deck. You've seen like the They Who Endure decks with Callista and Elise and, you know, going with more spiders and stuff like that. But again, that deck really relies on They Who Endure quite a bit. And so it's nice, you know, to have Hecarim. They, they can both kind of share the load where you don't just like simply rely on one card or the other at your top end. You got them both up there. Because um, the games are going to go longer. Like, you know, uh, you're not going to like just die right away with this kind of deck. So it's nice having both of them. All right, one big change, though, since since last time. Neverglade Collector out of the deck. Neverglade Collector has just been too slow. It's been, uh, you know, waiting till turn five to play it, and then you just don't even want it in combat. It's just not really something that you want with a deck like this. You want to just keep on getting as much damage in and and, and uh, getting the board clear and all that kind of stuff. Like, you, you want your cards in combat, and I just haven't been happy with the Neverglade Collector. So taking that card out... And instead, um, replacing it with a few things. We're going to play one Chronicler of Ruin. Because I just wanted another, you know, like, uh, kind of like mid rangey card to play. And Chronicler of Ruin, it's not spectacular. It's not like something that our deck is really focused on. But it can do some really cool things. And it can have, it does have some good synergy. Whether it's, you know, killing a Wraith Caller. So you get another Mist Wraith. Or maybe it's, um, maybe you can, uh, obviously, the, I guess the most obvious one is Cursed Keeper, right? Like, if you have Cursed Keeper on turn two, you Chronicler of Ruin the Cursed Keeper, get a 4-4. Four, four. That's the best. Sometimes you can, like, have on turn six, you can, like, play a Shark Chariot and play a Chronicler of Ruin and kill your Shark Chariot. And therefore, you'll have, like, two Shark Chariots now coming back. That can be really nice. Um, sometimes you just kill something to level up your Callista. Um, sometimes you uh, can reset They Who Endure. Like maybe you play like a They Who Endure that's like a 6-6 six, six kind of early on, and you know then it's down to like being like a 6-3 after they've blocked. Um, and then you can, and you've had like another four things die, and then you can kill your They Who Endure, and now it's a 10-10, a you know? Like so you can do that. You can reset with Chronicler of Ruin. So we got one of those in, but it's not something that I want a bunch of. So, you know, there's just the one. The other two cards, I wanted some more power. I wanted another removal spell, so we got a second Vengeance in here. And then also one Rekindler, because Rekindler is ridiculously good with both Hecarim and Callista. So we got one of those in here. All right. Um, yeah, let's play some Hecarim Endure. Let's go play five games over in Ranked. And here we go. Um, Scuttlegeist, yeah, Scuttlegeist can frequently be a, a free 5-5, five five, but not all the time. And it's something that will slow you down. It's it's not just free. Like, there's, it will slow you down if you have it in your opener, because you're not going to always keep your four cards. So let's say you mulligan cards like this, and then suddenly it pops up. Um, yeah, let's get rid of all of these. And then, you know, suddenly your Scuttlegeist pops up, and it just kind of gets stuck in your hand. We already have a good amount of expensive cards that are going to be stuck in our hand in the early game anyway. <clears throat> hmm. So normally I play Callista here, but I guess I guess we'll do Cursed Keeper. <laughs> yeah, that's Harvey. Harvey was that's my dog. He's just uh, a big place. 
clawing at the carpet. I don't really know why, but and then lay down, you know, like lay down where she was clawing. I don't know if you can see her. She, see, she's back yet. There, that's her. And then you have uh, puppy laying in the bed. Kind of laying in the bed. Oh, you can't. See. Oh, right, the table's in the way. All right, so this is going to be a, a difficult. This kind of be. This is going to be a difficult task. That's a bunch of elusive damage. I thought we were going to have some more time. So doing this glimpse beyond here. Because if, so if they want to keep me from drawing two cards, that means they don't have this mystic shot for the for my four two. Ooh, okay. Uh, that doesn't kill anything. So wraith crawler just brings you know the four three and the two two. The two two is kind of easy to block. So many mystic shots. I would not mind trading Callista for the 4-3 though. Like I, I would be happy with that trade. Which is why I played Callista. I wanted to try to incentivize them at trading. Dang. I got a mean hand. Fast as wind, light as air. Gotta hurt. Just pass back to me. Possibly just pass back. Yeah, this is this is bad. I should I should just play one of these things. It's okay if they kill him. Yeah, that was that was bad. Yeah, that that was bad by me. That was, I didn't have time to do that. That's, I mean, so like, let's say like they, they do Mystic Shot this and then, you know, use another removal spell and kill that. that that's still not damage they're doing to me. Um, and then, you know, it'd still play a They Who Endure afterwards. That's a 7-7. Seven, seven. So I should have just done the first time. That was, that was a poor play. Especially with like Ezreal decks a lot of the time, like, I don't know if they do with Vi and Heimerdinger, but a lot of the time Ezreal decks have, uh, you know, the seven mana, the Yone. A lot of times they have Yone and so, yeah. That was a quick decision that I regretted right afterwards. I fight with my spirit, not my fist. Yeah, we didn't do that well with Karina Control. We we did play against the same deck three times out of the five rounds. We went one and two against that and lost our other ones. Okay, I'm, I'm just playing really poorly, aren't I? There's just no reason to play this card. Card just didn't do anything. Yeah, there's really no reason to play that card. <laughs> that was really dumb. Okay. I just got flustered by by the other thing and talking about that, but oh well. <clears throat> All right, so I just wasted two mana for no reason. If I must. As fate will. I guess there's kind of a reason. All right, we let's let's stay positive. So what we just did here is we just played these things that are going to die at the end of turn to make they who endure even bigger. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I, w I did think about that. I thought about just attacking with, with all the ephemerals to help level up Hecarim. Ready yourself. Decided that the damage probably matters more. You're between me and glory. Yeah, because that's, that's a card we were never going to use anyway. Because, like, we are probably just going They Who Endure from now on, right? So, yeah, we're just helping out They Who Endure. There we go, figured it out. I hope I'm not dead. All they need is three damage. Monster Chain was really fun. Yeah, I, I like that game quite a bit. So yeah, now we're definitely dead. So Level up Ezreal. Alright, well, turn six. The turn I lost that game. Turn six. I hit the pass button and immediately regretted it. Hey, Shade. Okay. Wrong choice. Yeah, do y'all think that I should upload the the video of me playing that first run of Monster Train to YouTube? Now somebody over there on YouTube said that I should. Yep. Yeah, no, our, my opponent did have a really good hand last time. That was... You know, they had like the 4-3 and the Ezreal for pressure, and then yeah, infinite mystic shots, thermogenic beam, all that kind of stuff. Good hand. GG. Alright, so they block it with Omen Hawk, turn Bark Beast into a 3-3. Double Omen Hawk. Triple one drop. I'm jealous. I wish I had triple one drop. We, we shall not rest until all betrayers be aid. These old eyes still see far and clear. Hmm. My best play would be Shark Chariot plus Blighted Caretaker. We don't have that ability. Our vengeance has burned long enough. Act now. You act now. Yeah, for the the region rewards, I recommend um, leveling up. Great hand. 
All three Omen Hawks. Very nice. I recommend um, Look out for going to level 8 and getting the champion capsule. Alright, so that's going to level up Callista. And then going to the next region and uh, level up to level 8 to get the champion capsule and so on. That's what I recommend. So the problem is I just don't, I don't have a good, like I have nothing to play next turn. You know, I'm not going to Blighted Caretaker my Callista. Um, I can't play Hecarim yet. Okay, there we go. That's something to play. Does Callista put in another shark? I don't think this is easy glimpse, like block glimpse, because, you know, then I don't caretaker, but maybe I just don't need a caretaker next turn. I just go straight to combat. Or I guess I'm going to be playing Hecarim next turn. Okay, yeah, we'll go block glimpse, play Hecarim. Will this put in another... Let's see, because what have we had die? We've just had... Oh no, we had Stirred Spirits die. We had Stirred Spirits die. Yeah, so like attacking, I get all those. I can play Hecarim first. Hey, say Ma. This could let them play like a They Who Endure or something bigger. And I don't have all the room to get everything. This will be four Ephemerals attacking. Yep, there's a They Who Endure. So they kill my Hecarim. And then I. What, I Black Spear this? Or I just still just attack here. I'd only get one extra Hecarim, but they would level up. It probably makes sense to level them up.
Well, one day who endures out of the, out of there. So that's good news. I pull the string. Y'all are saying I should have used Hecarim's Onslaught of Shadow spell and then not attack with Hecarim, then I would have had the two extra ephemerals. Yeah, that would have been good. There's a attacking in the wrong order, right? Shouldn't the... Even if they want to make this attack, shouldn't the Collector be last? No, I mean, I think I think we have to make that block because the yeah, like the fury of the north would have just like killed me if I don't make that block. All right, so that goes there. Um, this goes here. Uh, I guess these these pull the shark out first. Well, all right, we don't get any stirred spirits, stirred spirits bonus. They really don't know how to block against Callista very well, though. It's like they could just block Callista and then this thing dies, and they would just save five life. And that thing still would have died. It could just be at eight, and it made the exact same blocks. They drew the only card that can kill me. Now if they have an atrocity as well. Everyone's a garden. Oh no. Yeah, they who endure. Why didn't you show up a turn earlier? Why couldn't we have that they who endure the turn earlier? No, I don't. No, I don't play Magic anymore. Switched over to this game, Runeterra. Man, that's 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 two games that I thought I thought for sure we were winning, <laughs> both games. I was like, okay, well, we got this game. Next game. All right, we got this game. No, once you cannot, uh, you cannot rank down from whatever 
classification you are. So yeah, if you're in gold four, you can't go back to whatever's at whatever's before gold four. But silver, I guess. No. Let me show you what I can do. No. Unfortunately, that's not a very good card to. <clears throat> that's not a very good card to Omenhawk. That's like our, our worst card to Omenhawk because it just dies right away. And then it will not come back as a 5-3. It'll come back as a 3-1 like normal. Do I let them... No. Not with all this open mana. Definitely can assume that they have transfusion. And if they have transfusion. I think this is my best block. They make the Crimson Disciple a 4 4, the trades. Well, let's see. Let's see. Okay, so this block means they couldn't use Transfusion on the Crimson Disciple. And that now they use it over here, but my Callista will level up because of the Glimpse Beyond. So Callista survives and is leveled up. And we got the Transfusion out of their hands. So that works. Try anyone. What will you have? I'm a tavern keeper. Day. Come on in. I like these three threes. Have, yeah, I was gonna say they can have that block put me down to seven. Let's talk about your tab. I've got meat bigger than you. Let's get a good look at you. This will make my uh, withering will better.
I really don't want to see another uh, transfusion or elixir of iron, any kind of health pumping effects like that from them. Guess we'll have the ability to ruination if need be, if they have Sejuani. Ugh. Can I just take the hit? I'm just one mana short of Atrocity Withering Whale. Atrocity Withering Whale will let me kill these, and then I could Atrocity, I could sack my Callista and kill the Sejuani and keep Hecarim alive. There's one mana short. I don't think, I don't, I don't think Ruination's in my best interest. Taste of the action. Hmm. That would have been great if they would have used the 2 1 to challenge. That would have been great. And yeah, if they have. Um, if they have pump spells, I'm in trouble. Yeah, they have a pump spell. So if I would have Ruination, they would have had another Sejuani. But. Uh, is this lethal? Maybe lethal. Yeah, looks like it. Or no, I'm going down to two. Oh, this hurts. oh no, that this hadn't struck in yet, so yep. Hmm. Play Sejuani, win immediately. I'm telling y'all, it's a, the very best champion in the game, Sejuani. Yeah, I have a lot of different uh, Fizz decks. Um, uh, yeah, I guess. Um, who else would you like to be in your Fizz deck, I guess? Buy Ezreal Gangplank. Do I just keep all of this? These Glimpse Beyonds have just been getting stuck in my hands. Maybe I'll try Mola getting that card. No! Should have kept Glimpse Beyond. Yeah, the, the Lucian, I mean, the Lucian Fury deck that we just played, that's a very consistent um, climbing deck. That's, you know, if you just want a, a very consistent climbing deck, Lucian Fury, a deck we just played, is awesome. Here's a, a couple of different Fizz decks. Um, here's uh, Twisted Fate Fizz, 
and just the all-in fizz. If you want just a deck built completely around fizz, that's the second one. Uh, do you think Misfortune Sejuani is better than Lucian Sejuani? No. No, I think the Lucian Sejuani is better. Rude. Lady Elise, where are you? That card was going to be really important. Yeah, the Lucian Sejuani code. <laughs> Lucian Sejuani, where'd it go? There it is. I'm doing this my way. There's the link. Um. And hit him where it's trouble coming at ya. Um, the code is here. Yeah, I like this deck too. Yeah, just because we're 03. I mean, <laughs> every single game I thought that we were winning and we just ended up losing. Some of it was uh, kind of loose play on my part. Um, other others of, of it, you know, was the opponents just having the right thing to finish the game at the time. But no, I like this deck as well. I'm gonna wait on Hecarim. I'm gonna wait a turn on Hecarim. Oh, fresh soil. What a great card. That's twice I've had a great card. The Mystic Shot earlier. That was perfect. You got to kill my two mana four three. Excuse you. And then that right there. Yeah, so I wanted to kind of wait on on Hecker until like after Ruination. <laughs> How it's been so far, though. We've had the right answers. It's a good ruination, getting rid of those champions. All right, so they who enter or Hecarim. Sixteen sixteen seems kind of tough to beat. Yeah, that one seems kind of tough to beat. I 
All right, one and three. There we go, got that win. <laughs> you think people are sleeping on Anivia? That would be myself as well. I have not had any success with Anivia for some time. Um, I like Anivia, like the art on Anivia is really cool and I like Anivia as a card, but I have not had any success with that card in a while. Maybe I just want to keep this They Who Enter. Let's see, so we're going to have... Hmm, no, we're going to mulligan it. Could use like one of those one drops to go caretaker one drop. Let me show you what I can do. Ooh, or curse keeper. There we go. So let's see. Option play shark cherry this turn. And then we're not playing Wraithcrawler later or play Callista this turn. No, we'll go Callista next turn. Okay. Because if I go Callista next turn, then I'm not Wraith Calling. So if I do this, I'm not Wraith Calling, though. So my plan is next turn, their attack Callista, then the, the following turn, turn five, I'll be able to go Curse Keeper plus Blighted Caretaker. Um. And, you know, basically be able to level up the Callista right then and there. Dang, I'm surprised they didn't trade Crimson Disciple. Especially having another Crimson Disciple. I'm surprised they didn't trade. Save some damage. I love a taste of the action. And now they're just willing to attack? Kind of weird. So Transfusion... Yeah, it's got to be Transfusion. Do I want to block and force a Transfusion right now? Let's see. So if we have Callista in play also, then I play this. That's the third thing. Then we play this is the fourth thing. Bum, bum. Yeah, actually, we're going to need we're going to need the space, aren't we? For Curse Curse Keeper Blighted Caretaker. Elixir of Iron, that's fine. Okay. That does make... Uh, you know, we're going to take four damage, but that makes my Caretaker better. No, I guess we didn't need this. Okay, never mind. I guess we could have had that 3 2. Well, no, no leveled up Callista for us. Definitely challenging that. Let's challenge this. Come, come this way. Yeah. Let's see what you can do. Hey, what's up, Daniel? First first time catching live? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Happy to have y'all here. And lots of people in here too today. Thanks for joining everybody. Let's see. So they're not going to be able to play a champion. That's a good sign. 
I can double spell with Wraithcrawler, Stirred Spirits, or um, I guess I could triple spell with Stirred Spirits, Callista, Omen Honk. That's pretty enticing. Or just slam Hecarim. I don't want to do the triple spell. Awesome, yeah, thanks for watching the YouTube vids. <laughs> triple spell. Doing very much. WQ! Yeah, it's been a little bit. Welcome back, WQ. First sub of the day. Okay, I think we're just gonna go straight to attacks. I don't want to play Hecarim and let them play Sejuani. We already have five things attacking. Like things could just get worse for us, not really better. There we go. So like that was a a two three, um, uh, yes. Here's the Lucian deck. That was a two three. That was kind of a crazy two three. Every single one of the losses, I was like pretty sure we were going to win until we suddenly lost. Um, I know like like the the first game, you know, I made the mistake with the passing on turn six. That was a mistake that like right after I clicked pass, I, you know, realized it was a mistake. Um, and that cost me that first game. And the second and third games were kind of, you know, aggressive. You know, there were aggressive matches back to back where we just barely lost a race. Um, couple, couple of uh, clutch draws from my opponent. Um, but yeah, there were ones I definitely thought we were going to be winning. Um, I, I like this deck. I like this build. Um, like, I really like the changes that, that I made. Um, you know, like I said, I was, I was playing this one earlier today off stream, kind of tuning it up. And yeah, the Neverglade Collector, or yeah, Neverglade Collector. It's just too slow. It really is too slow. And so I like that we took that out. I like having that Chronicler of Ruin. It, it looked pretty decent. And then um, we didn't really do anything with Rekindler, but I like having that Vengeance Rekindler, that kind of stuff instead. Because yeah, sometimes, like, with Sejuani is so good, they who endure... Very good. You know, sometimes you just need those those vengeances. Um, we got pretty pretty sweet deck here. Oh, I like the Omen Hawks. You know, like that was that was the new addition was Omen Hawk. Omen Hawk looked really good. Um, I wonder if Omen Hawk's better than Hapless Aristocrat. I I really debated between those two of like which one to play three of, which one to play two of. Um, I could see going three Omen Hawk, two Hapless Aristocrat for sure. Because Hapless Aristocrat's really not that good of a card. I, I could definitely see doing that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably should change those. Okay, there we go. So that's Hecarim Endure. Uh, those of y'all watching later on on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And uh, leave those comments. I always love seeing your comments over on YouTube. It brightens up my day. Um, but that's it here for Hecarim Endure. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.